going on, everybody? Welcome to the Black and Gold. This is Hibernation, the unofficial home of your Boston Bruins. Woo! I'm Goosey, here with Mr. Man of the People himself, Maddie V. Dude, how we doing? What's going on, baby? New day, dude. New day. New day. New beginnings. I'm feeling good. It was a good week. It was a good week. It was a good week. We also got a good show. Uh, we're going to talk about the Bruins press conference uh, and some of the players' reactions post-firing of Jim Montgomery. Uh, we kind of went more in detail on that in episode 20.5, um, the our emergency pod. So if you want a little bit more detail, go and watch that. This is just going to be kind of like an overview of 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 uh, all those reactions of what um, Don Sweeney had to say. Uh, we're going to get into Joe Sacco's first two games as a head coach, um, you know, and then we'll do our weekly wrap up, our big bad Bruin, and we'll take a look at the week ahead. Uh, but first, we got some bare naked news. We do. It didn't take long, but Jim Montgomery has been scooped up and has been hired as the head coach of the St. Louis Blues. St. Louis comes in at 9-12-1 and on the season. They are sixth in their division, and Montgomery signed a five-year deal right out of the gate five days later. Yeah, being I, I, didn't, I thought he was going to get picked up. I did not see that coming. No, I didn't see five. I, I thought maybe two, three to start, but I didn't anticipate five right out of the gate i mean st louis is a struggling uh is a struggling team i also thought nashville would have been a good spot i thought pittsburgh would have been a good spot i also didn't think of st louis but that's also a good spot for a coach like him he we all know he's from there up. correct he came from st louis i believe he came from dallas i believe we picked him up from dallas who am i thinking of then i could not tell you but it definitely was not jim montgomery because I Scratch think we that. picked them up. From, yeah. <laughs> Scratch it. <laughs> Rewrite it. <laughs> Redo it. Um, yeah, it'll be good for him. Um, you know, everyone knew he was going to get back on his feet. Um, just some other weird stats that I came by. So, Claude Julian was picked up about a week after he was Also fired. weird. Also weird that the two of them will be on the same bench now. As for now. Yep. Yep. Here's even weirder. Bruce Cassidy, six days. Then Montgomery was five days. So if we get rid of Joe Sacco, is he going to be four days? You know, it, it's just decreasing day by day here. I know we mentioned it in the emergency pod, but obviously we, we all kind of collectively agree that this was kind of putting a Band-Aid on the situation. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's bigger problems. And do you think, you know, showing that our last three head coaches were picked up so quick? I mean, again, that just goes to show you the front office. I mean... At what point are we going to start start shaking that up? Definitely makes me question the front office. I mean, I've been questioning the front office at probably ever since Cassidy's firing, maybe even slightly before that. Um, more so now, though. More so now because you have a lot of people saying there's no way it's just solely Jim Montgomery. There is a rumor that I have seen circulating that um, the reason why he did not accept multiple contract offers from Don Sweeney was because there was a stipulation where he didn't get to bring his his own group of people in. I bet you he's going to keep Claude Julian in St. Louis. I mean, that's a smart defensive coach. Um, you know, I would imagine him keeping that, but I think that was a point of contention um, that that has suddenly kind of come up why Montgomery did not accept any of his offers over the summer. Um, and that was mentioned in the press conference. So let's get into that. Obviously, the day after the firing, um, you know, Don Sweeney held a presser. And it's always wonderful to watch that man just step up in front of a mic and just make an ass out of himself, um, as always. But he paid credit to Monty. Um, he said the decision was not easy. Very, you know, routine, as anyone's going to say. No one's going to get up on a mic and just absolutely bash the other person unless your name is John Tortorella. Um, he'll do that for free. <laughs> and as mentioned, he offered several contracts to Monty. None were, ex none were you know accepted um so it just looked like monty might have known that that is the direction that, that was gonna go and maybe after he, he couldn't bring his own people in he could have wanted it to go that way but i don't know there's it, a lot of it's speculation but what are your thoughts on that before we play a video by don sweeney uh, i think it really i think it says something to about the you know the organization as a whole the fact that your head coach now has been with the team for 14 years and three head coaches that obviously they like to keep the same people 
you know, on the staff and behind the bench. So it, I can see that being a possibility. Um, I can also see any head coach being frustrated. They can't bring their own guys in and they have to, they have to, not that it's bad because obviously they had a record winning season and, you know, Boston is a, you, most, most of the time a playoff team and whether it's a, a, a deep run or, or an early exit. Uh, but I can see a coach being fed up with that and looking to go somewhere where they have more power. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can agree. It, it's definitely a piece to it. Um, all right. So let's get to what Don Sweeney had to say. In Brad's case, I can go piece by piece. In Brad's case, he clearly missed camp and had some some uh, uh, things that he had to get cleaned up. Uh, you know, David didn't have a very good training camp as well. Um, might not have had the offseason he wanted again. I don't want to be too specific and too critical on any one singular player. I just felt our camp was <clears throat> was just flatlined across the board. And uh, to me, that, that, that was the first troubling sign. Now, again, people coming in, uh, but we were flat all the way through training camp. Whether or not they thought it was going to be easy and the guys that had really good last year, you know, would come out and then they would just fall in place. Again, this league is incredibly humbling if you have that approach to the game and it'll expose you in a hurry. And that's sort of what's happened to our group in the fact that it doesn't come easy and you have to work harder as a result of it. And you have to be have more structure in place to fall back on, on success. And that's what, that's what our fan base expects. That's what you guys expect. And, and I clearly expect it. So we're going to get back to it. And if we don't, it falls back on me in terms of the player personnel. A lot of things he said there. Um, you know, he mentioned the camp being flat. You know, I, I don't know how much I would necessarily agree with that, but, you know, you, you had Pasternak coming off of, like, an off-season injury that was nagging him. You had Marshawn with surgeries. He alluded to a lot of this. You know, you could put a lot of that on Montgomery, right? Um, also, how if that's true, how much of that is, you know, at the time, the lingering Swayman contract, um, guys coming – Injuries in the offseason, surgeries with Marshawn. I mean, it could be Montgomery be attributing to that, but it, there, there were so many more factors at play. Um, I, I didn't th- get outside looking in. It didn't look like there was any huge issues. It just looked like camp. But Yeah, and, you know, I did like what he said about the, the players being lax at his goal, coming in and expecting everything just to kind of fall into place. Nobody should be expecting that. And I like what he said about the NHL being a very humbling league. You're going to get your crap stomped and expecting it to just kind of fall into place. And look, the Bruins are what, 10, 9, and 3 because of it. So you got to put in the work. Um, He also spoke about fixing the roster. If there are people who they're going to identify the people that want to be here and then the people that don't want to be here. He later on d- discussed upon that is that that's on his own is to find those people and, and deal with that. So that kind of brings up and in, back into question about what we talked about regarding, you know, it, are there issues in the locker room? Is was Montgomery just a, a, the scapegoat that you had mentioned of a larger issue? And it's a band aid. Yeah, yeah, I'm, and I think that that, like you said, Sweeney can bullshit his way through any press conference, and all. Interesting to hear him say, um, at like going forward, if anything goes wrong, it's on me because of player personnel and guys aren't performing the way they should. So, again, in theory, taking accountability, but it could just be, oh, we just got rid of our coach, so now, you know, I got to do. Everyone's got to do their job, including me, which is again just their stereotypical bullshit. But if he actually, if the organization holds him accountable uh, for what's happened in, for the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, truthfully, I don't know why he would still be here. Yeah, I'd imagine, I mean, him and Neely are very buddy-buddy. I mean, you, we could talk about who's going to be on the hot seat, too. But and as far as I'm concerned, after watching this team, a lot of players should be in the hot seat. I you mean, say going our- to, do you think that they're not yet? <laughs> <laughs> they after firing Cassidy after doing a lot of things, I then they still weren't, and you know it. Whatever they do, and you're just like they got to fire him, and then like you know you were probably saying that, and then they have the season that they had in 2022, 2023, and you're like, well, they made that difficult because part of it's on the onus of the players. You can't fire the GM for having a great season 
and then the players fumble the bag or the coach fumbles the bag. Like it's, there are layers to it. And so I think I've said it, I think Don Sweeney should be in, in, in the hot seat. He brought you Elias Lindholm though. He brought you Nikita Zadorov. They have not performed and he's called them out too, but you know, these are not, you know, no name players. There, Zadorov's a big body. Lindholm is a big name coming out of Calgary or a big ish name. So is it the illusion that he's doing his job or like, I don't even know who he's referring to. Do you think he's just doing enough to say, Hey, listen, I'm, I'm trying to put the team together. Like do you yeah, trying to, you know, just, just kind of co-staying and going through the motions. If that's not just the biggest HR conversation that you could have with any freaking organization, could you imagine that? Like you're sitting and getting your performance review, like, well, you're not doing great, but you're not doing bad. You're meeting the expectations, but we would really appreciate it if you would exceed that sometimes. But, but that's not going what's going to get you fired. But in the sports world, it should. But do you think that? I mean, that to me, that seems like what's what's going on. And yeah. when the coach gets fired, and he can he can make all the comments he wants, and oh, you know, now I have to do my job. It's like, well you should have been doing it the whole time and you should have been building a better roster. And yes, you brought two big names in, but a lot of the guys on this team would be, they're playing on our, you know, second, third line. They wouldn't even be on another team's fourth line. No, with the way they're playing right now. No. Oh, and don't forget, he brought you the, the best player of them all and Max Jones. That was by far the best signing I've ever seen, but great, Waste. great use of $1 million. Um, Can I give I've an ever opinion seen. here, guys? Yeah, come on in, Rick. Rick's got an opinion. I got an opinion. I'll just say it over here. A lot in my experience, when a GM feels like maybe his job is in in jeopardy, one of the things they'll do is you can't really do a lot of trades and stuff. They'll fire the coach, and I kind of have a feeling that might be what happened here. Part of it, anyway, is that he felt his job was in jeopardy. He had to do something. He fired the coach. Well, we we alluded to that before too, because it seems like on any any team, any sport, if the team isn't performing well, the first fall guy is going to be the coach. So yes, I mean that would if, if he feels like things aren't going well and he he is he is on the hot seat. That hey, look, I'm trying I'm trying to make a change here. So it's the, it's the first person that go. The first fall guy is always the head coach. Yeah. yeah especially after the credit that he gave to Montgomery. And then he immediately goes and looks at the players and then he goes back to kind of discrediting Monty and he blames camp. I, and I don't think that, you know, a lot of times the camp is for the players to be showcased, the, the younger talent, not necessarily the veterans, you know, your veterans are going to be on the roster. So I, it is saving face. I, I don't think Montgomery, like firing Montgomery was the best move, but it had to happen. So, and it's a lot easier to, and we've said this before, to fire a coach, get someone in the interim, then completely revamp the roster. But it doesn't seem like that's out of the question right now. But who, you, there's been scouts at Bruins games. But who are you going to get rid of? Half our team has no movement clauses. I'll attach a first round pick to Max Jones just for someone to get in the hell off my team and give me someone functional. <laughs> like... You're you know? not going to see much. You're not going to see much of him anymore. Nope. I think I think they'll take him at. And you know what? He actually doesn't qualify for a buried penalty. So you, in order for the player to qualify for a buried penalty, they have to make 1.3 million and over. So his contract can be buried without any penalties down in the AHL. So fine, keep him. I don't give a shit. But don't call him up. That's where he's going to stay. I guarantee it. So, un, yeah, undoubtedly. And which is a shame too. He was a former first round pick. I I actually had the hopes that we could have brought him here, made him better than than what he was. But I don't know. I think what everything that Don Sweeney was said was to save face. He's not going to get fired. It's going to bug the crap out of me. Bought himself some more time. Yeah, very minimal. As far as I'm concerned, minimal. Another so, interesting th- another interesting thing too um that you know came I think it was after that press that presser was a lot of the player reactions. We heard some big name, big name guys in the team, their reactions to the firing. And again, like you said, a lot of times it's, it's, you're not going to go out and bad melt the guy when he just lost his job and he was, you know, your head coach, but it seemed like the guys put him, pet him not on a pedestal, but you know, held him in high regard. Yeah. Why don't we hear what the leadership core had to say? Uh, I feel a big part of Gil because 
at the end of the day, us players are the ones performing out there, you know, and, and uh, we weren't getting it done. And, you know, because of we weren't getting the job done, uh, we lost a great coach and an uh, amazing human being. And uh, so it's tough. One day, also very frustrating. This is a reflection of, of our, our, you know, our play, and, and it was avoidable. And I think that's, that's the tough part about this is that if, if we would have done our job in here, um, you know, he, he'd still be around. And feel terrible as a group. Um, individually, that uh, you know, we let a really good coach and a really good person down, um, you know, and the effect it has not just on him but on his family. Uh, we lost it. We lost it for a minute, and this is life, and these things happen. But today, you wake up and you realize that you still have the best job in the world, playing for the best team in the world, the best organization in this game. I'm lucky and I'm blessed to be here, and. and Today was a day of gratification, you know, self-reflection, and then realizing that holy, we have 62 games left, and we're still in a playoff spot or somewhere near it. We got everything to play for, and that's the crest, that's each other, that's that's everything, and it's all going to be all right. So, in that order, it was David Pasternak, then Brad Marchand, followed by Charlie McAvoy, and just look at the difference between the first two and then compare that to McAvoy. It seemed like Pasternak and Marshawn really took ownership on, you know, their, their poor performance, the team's poor performance uh, and what it kind of led to in the firing of Jim Montgomery. And then y- you hit Charlie McAvoy and he just kind of says shit happens, you know, and that we should all be thankful that we get, they get to play the greatest sport in the world there. It's for the greatest team. It, I didn't see much accountability from from McAvoy as much as I did from Pasternak and, and Marshawn. And that that bothers me a bit. And perhaps maybe this is me reading too much into it. But what, I, I wanted to know after seeing that what your thoughts were. My initial thought was um, before when they when I heard the question being asked, obviously, you know, the players are going to be asked. It's we've asked the question a bunch to you see it online. Did Montgomery lose the locker room? first two it seemed like he didn't and they liked him and they liked having him around as a coach and as a person and the McAvoy's answer was more what you would think somebody would say if he had lost the locker room and you know it's it, it's on us and we lost a great coach and instead it's uh, you know things happen you know we got to move forward we're lucky I'm blessed uh, you know we're, we're not looking backwards we're looking forward that kind of you know that kind of bullshit so it was interesting. It was interesting. I mean, again, I've made my feelings about McAvoy pretty pretty clear. Not but I fan. thought that well, if I anyone is going to should be taking accountability, it's him. Yep. Yeah, I agree. His his defensive play has been putrid to start the season, and I I bet you anything that Montgomery has let him have it in the locker room. The, he I I do not doubt for a single second that Montgomery laid into a lot of his players and said that you are not playing to the Bruins you know, way now. I don't know how much he maybe went at McAvoy, but I, for me, the, the two leadership responses in, in Pasternak and Marshawn were the responses I was expecting out of every member of the Bruin, Bruins leadership core on that team, you know, because at the end of the day, Montgomery is still a guy and he is a phenomenal coach, you know, you're not going to have everyone agree in the room, but you got to give credit where credit's due because I think without Montgomery, I don't think McAvoy or anyone on that team would have been where they were two years ago. I mean, Montgomery certainly helped that that team out two years I ago. I definitely do. I, and again, I, I feel bad the guy lost his job. I'm happy he got picked up. You never want to, you know, talk about another man's job, but I he wasn't my favorite coach. I didn't think that he was, he was all that stellar. I thought a lot of the shit that he did didn't make any sense. It'll be interesting to see if a lot of that if that kind of translate into St. Louis and if, if they end up having the same or similar problems that we had. I mean, we could say he's not a good coach, but last year they, they didn't have that great of a team in terms of depth. They they vert they have a virtually a better team this year than they did last year. Like how many it, different it, players are on the roster? Three. Three. Two? Yeah. Three. I mean, it's again, it's the same team. Yeah. So it's I would put some onus on on the players there, but still, it we're we're a better team. I don't know. I, I there's definitely still some questions, and I think what McAvoy said 
leans more towards that there is a problem in the locker room that they he goes you know he said yeah we lost it for a minute but we all get to wake up and realize that we're we're playing hockey for our lives for like a dream that many people would would have and you know we got to get back to the basics is basically what i think he was saying but not to even address that you know you lost your coach and that your your poor performance because let's be real not all you can't put a hundred percent of everything on montgomery trying to juggle the lineup sure is annoying but trying to do he at least montgomery would do was doing something most coaches won't and they'll just you, you also and, and to kind of circle back to sweeney you can only do so much with the tools that you're given yeah but I think this year he was given some good tools. I, I mean, you you had you were given an excellent two way forward and Elias Lindholm. Zadorov is a is a decent defenseman, he, but they were he was killing you in penalties. Elias Lindholm had a great stellar start. Nobody else had a stellar start. Corpusala was getting used to a new system. Fourth right, line. stellar start. For, fourth line had a stellar start. <laughs> so you know, if you think about it, like it's it, it's I see it as like a thirty. Three percent split across everybody, like you know what I mean. Don didn't do a good job vetting maybe some of the players that were coming in the locker room. That's why Max jo- Max Jones is probably d- going to be buried down in Providence. Montgomery probably attempted to do too much and didn't focus on like you know too much on the details. And then the players just simply weren't performing. You know that that's it. I mean, you pay McAvoy what nine million dollars, and I don't even know what his stats are right now, but they're, I can tell you they're not good. Then I already know your stance on him. Yeah, uh, and I I'm trying. I am trying. Yeah, I've said it before. I want I want to buy into it, but yeah, I can't. So I can't so far. And I, I mean, just for for, for perspective, right now, he has seven points in twenty two games. He's a plus one rating. That's it. I expect more out of a player making nine million dollars. That's it. Yeah. I also, so that that's it. Does I have to yeah. say on him? It's a band aid. It's a band aid. This is a hey, let's buy us a little more time. Maybe try to sort things out and try to everyone have everyone keep their jobs. It's putting a band aid on 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 a deeper situation that that needs to be fixed and quick if they want to stay relevant this year. Yep. So I think you do need a strong voice in the locker room. If the Flyers were to let go of John Tortorella this season, I would. I would start changing my mind about Sweeney if he hired him and brought him in because you know what no, you need to get. I would. No. <laughs> I want. I would take John Tortorella. No, I would take no, John no, Tortorella no, no, no. because I that that would be want awesome. Him anywhere near. Are you sure? Uh, yes. He's great for accountability. He would smack Chubby Charlie like just right across his face no, and be like, he's "Don't a disrespect fucking me." Fucking internet he's, meme. He's <laughs> he's awesome. What do you mean? He won the cup in 04, dude. Like he's not a bad coach. He's a phenomenal coach, except if you're Rick Nash, in which case he'll just tell you you suck on national TV. He is a lunatic. So far for what I've seen this past week, I'll take Sack Daddy until until, <laughs> you had until to say it like that. turn around. Man had to say it like that. Sack Daddy. Until Joe Sacco. He's my coach. Yeah, he yes, he is. Joe Sacco is our. He's coach. my coach. I was at his first game as a head coach in Boston against Utah. Right they now, won. he's undefeated. So, <laughs> prove me wrong. I'm not. You're not saying there's a correlation, but you know when you go to games, I am two and zero this year. Yeah, just a fact. What did I say? We're gonna go what? Seventy at this point nine and three. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something along those lines. Dude, we're back on track for it. It's we're on the table. Track. It's back on the table. It's back on the table. Not saying it's going to happen, but there's a possibility. We're, it's out there. It's not going to happen. But like, it's There's not there. a 0% chance. Let's just put it there. Yeah, that way. it's probably like a 0.001%, but or like not zero. But not zero. It rounds, but we don't round here. We do exact numbers only. Um. Yeah, his 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 first two games were pretty were, – were okay. They're okay. Like, you know what I mean? They weren't spectacular. Like a one-to-nothing win off of a power play goal – on Utah. Yeah. Power play goal. You don't see many of those this year. Sure. Joe Sacco Joe Sacco's power play is 22% versus <laughs> Montgomery's what? 15%? I think it was like 11. What whatever. So he doubled it. C- congratulations. Like I don't know. Oh. Like also crazy too in that Utah game that there was only one power play goal. They have like I don't know what these seven. numbers are. They like, had seven. Eight. Yeah, seven or eight power play. So, so, that's not great. And like no. they scored what one 
of two yesterday in the Red Wings, they they could have easily went thirty three percent instead of the fifty percent where they went. It's I I'm not convinced. It is such a small sample size. I don't want to go and say that this team is already better under Joe Sacco than they were under Jim Montgomery, despite going two and zero. They've had two game win streaks. Um. Two other times this year, they have not yet been able to muster a three-game win streak. This is per Ty Anderson. So it's going to have to be consistency for me. They've shown this before. So <laughs> good. Like, do you want me to just say, oh, and everyone's like running to Twitter and be like, Joe Sacco's the man. He's He, brought, he, he brought it back. I'm willing to give him a shot. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm willing to give him a shot. But I'm just saying it's not just him you have to look at. Look at the team. Can they be consistent? Because it's been historical in the NHL, right? That teams, after a coaching change, they do get a little hop in their step. Coaches bump. Thanks, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go yeah, away yeah. now, young all, boys. All kidding aside, um, it, it was better. It wasn't great. It wasn't good. I mean, a lot. It was good, not fantastic, but a lot of things to work on. But it was better. One of the one of the biggest differences that I saw, and I don't know if it's the team after that happened, you know, maybe the captains get with the team or the new coach kind of gets them together and lights a fire under them, but they look like they came to play. They look like they wanted to be that heavy hitting team, that a team that plays with some tenacity and, and some fight in them. I mean, you saw it during during Utah. It was a scrappy game and they weren't taking any shit. Utah is also without still two of their best defensemen. So I'm not impressed. They're beating no, teams they shouldn't be beating. Yes, but also again, it's not it's not great. It's not perfect and it's not completely fixed. But it it shows a, that there might be hope. There might be hope that that they can write that Sacco can write the ship, get everything back on track, and and start playing better. He's been here a long time, so I'm anticipating it. That he knows that locker room. He knows that facility inside and out. He's he's worked with Neely for very long time Sweeney for a very long time he's known Marshawn for they, they, that relationship has to be strong so that's what gives me hope that there's going to be something uh, apparently they're not looking for a head coach job right now according to Sweeney and that was according to his press conference and it would have been he I think he also said something that it would have to be something he couldn't pass up but they may explore adding another another um you know assistant coach of, of some kind. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge Sacco because personally, and I don't know about you. He's undefeated it, in Boston. He's, he's undefeated against the Utah hockey club, missing two of their best defensemen in the Detroit Red Wings who are like Ottawa, a hot mess. They don't ask and, how they ask how many. Sure. <laughs> but in this case, we're also going to ask how, because you know, it's who I am. <laughs> I th I think it's just too early to assess Joe Sacco's performance. Give it two weeks. Actually, in reality, yeah. is it too early? Yes, but also no. Fuck it, let's ride, Sack Daddy. <laughs> Two and zero, we're staying undefeated. <laughs> we're going. We're going seventy nine and three. <laughs> going to be an awesome year. We're going to break 2023's record with the, with this roster. <laughs> Not a shot in hell. It, it, Whatever he's doing good so far. I can't I can't complain. The team won two games. They got four critical points out of like you know out of his tenure, which is what they needed. We're gonna put the Columbus game way so far in the past to the point where we can't even think about it anymore. I'm the Columbus Dirt Boys. I do, I cannot talk. I cannot describe to you my emotions during that game. And I will and I will not because I'm pretty sure I was close to getting kicked out of TD. Yeah, but that's tough. fine. Tough to watch. Like we said, we said it in, on the emergency pod. You, you, everyone there, everyone watching was visibly and audibly upset. I mean, you were at the game. You could attest to it. I mean, it was bad. I, I was at the game. I sat right behind Jeremy Swayman's net. And th this is a good time to segue us into our weekly recap. And we'll start with Columbus, the five to one loss on Monday night at home. We have to. To the, yeah, I, we do. We, we really do. I, I really want to talk about how they I got the chance. I got to um, chant so much shit, and most of it was towards the Bruins because I just I got so fed up with it. I still believe that the team could have mustered something. They what went down three to nothing at the end of the first. 
Then the Charlie Coyle gets us a goal in the in the second period off of a power play. Wonderful pass from Brezzo. But wasn't enough. Wasn't enough. They lost to the Delumbus. Yeah, the Delumbus. The, the Columbus. Columbus. <laughs> the Columbus Dirt Jackets. Their their team is literally less than dirt. Two days after they got like Columbus got blown out by Montreal. Which is embarrassing in its own right. Yeah. So what does that really say? And Jeremy Swayman started in that guy couldn't stop a beach ball. People were chanting his salary value. People were booing the Bruins off the ice. It was a wonderful experience at the garden where I got to drink like seven beers. And <laughs> yeah, for seven hundred dollars. <laughs> that's fine. I needed I needed it. I needed it. I need there would there needed to be some something. They they could only score one fucking goal. On Elvis Merz Lincolns. Merz Lincoln. Merz Lincolns. I, th- I, you know what? I debated finding the clip of that just to put it on here so we could play Mer- it. Merz Merz Lincoln. We'll find it. We'll find it. I, I'm Merz sure we'll play it that I'm right. Yeah, yeah, it is right. Yeah, yeah. Alex, um, Alex, I found that out. Yeah, and then he apologized <laughs> to you. Yeah, that was Merz tough. Lincoln. It wasn't even just like, oh, we lost it. We got our, we got our doors blown off by the friggin' Blue Jackets. Yeah, I I I sat right behind Swayman, dude. He looked awful. Yeah, the team did not play in front of him, and yeah. Columbus they just let Columbus walk all over him. So yeah. I don't know. That adds to the drama, and that's why when the word came out that there could be something surrounding Swayman, I'm not going to doubt it because I saw that live action. So, side note: the jumbotron was freaking lit. Dr- bunch of drunk fans. So as you can imagine, yeah, some crazy. Is. It usually is. Uh, Thursday's game against Utah. Sacco's first game as the coach. I was at that daddy. Game. You mean sack daddy? It is, yeah, sack daddy. Uh, very, still very weird to see Utah in person. I mean, like just the the logo, the color is still not used to it. Like it's like a team yet. Yeah, it was cool to see them in valid. person. Cool. I mean. It's just weird, weird. I've never been to like a, an expansion, uh, really any expansion team. It was just funny to see. Um, that was the game. Right off the bat, you noticed that they came that the Bruins wanted to play with intensity. I thought uh, Castellick wanted to rip everyone's head off that he came across. It ended up being oh, a chippy he's game. The balls. It, he's, he's the balls. <laughs> he's the balls. It was a chippy man. game. Um, <laughs> It a couple times, and I don't know if you could see it on TV. It looked like Corpusalo wanted to fight somebody, whether it was somebody after the whistle skating by the net. One time, and I don't know, I could be wrong on this. He could have just been skating away from the play. It looked like he was skating down, you know, towards the other net. By the way, I don't know the name of that. The get the, the, the other Utah's goalie name starts with a V. Vamelka. Vamelka. Oh, he was unbelievable. He yeah. was good. Yeah, he made some stellar saves. Like I, I watched that game. Like he was good. He, the Bruins could have easily ran away with that game. Yeah, could have easily ran away with that game. But yeah. he, he stood on, he stood on his head. He stood on his head. Also, if our team could also, you know, finish our opportunities. I'm being very pessimistic tonight, aren't I? Like we're, we're we yeah, had we're, a two. We're, we're undefeated under Sacco. Come on. Yeah, Come we on. had a two in one week, and I'm just like, by the way, I'm 66 percent on my guessing. For this past week, for this past week, and I think that took me down to like maybe seventy percent, like yeah, you know, in the know. year. So I don't. I mean, now we. If you guys need we advice, we can get into it a little bit later. But you I guys need advice. Ask me. I did not have a hot week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You went zero. You got nothing. Yeah, nothing. You had no faith. Yes. No, it, uh, it was cool, I dude. Went over. It, yeah, it was cool, dude. I'm glad. How was the game, by the way? Like, did you actually good. like enjoy it? Yeah, enjoy it was that? good. It was a very good game. I get tough to tough to see at the end of the game. I think it took like five or six chances to score on an open net to kill the end to end the game. Uh, Pasternak finally does it. It gets called back. Yeah, we didn't realize back. at first why. They showed the replay on the screen right away. You could yeah. see it right away. Very yeah. obvious eye stick. How many? Uh, yeah. Oh my god! I remember that just sitting there, and I'm just like, can, "How are we missing?" Did, did, how are we missing all these opportunities? There's no, it, does everyone just have the yips in that moment where they're, they're just like, you know, just whipping on it. And then Pasternak finally settles it with the high, it was with the high stick. And of course, right call was the right call. But I just remember like, just, you know, flailing my arms of like, dude, we can't catch a fucking break. Credit to Utah though, with an empty net. They played great in their own end, trying to save that, that 
nail in the coffin goal. Did you see Corpusalo had to make so many good saves? Like in that final minute, I thought for sure shit we were gonna go to overtime. Yeah, once it got called back, I went with my brother and he was saying he was like, watch, that got called back, and now they're going to score, and now we're going to go to overtime, and it was close. <laughs> it, it was. was. Close. He, Corpus Allo, he stood up big, dude. That was probably one of his best games as a Bruin. Um, Yeah, good good win. Greasy win. You needed it after Jim's firing. And then you had Detroit Saturday, which is last night for us uh, at the time of this recording. Um, Two to one win. Good. Yeah, good. I don't think that anything was, um, you know, stood out one way or the other. It was just a, you know, back and forth game. A team that you should beat. I mean, you've said that before. A team that yep. you should beat. Um, and they did it. They ended up getting away with the two points. So, yeah, I mean, right now Detroit's they, they have a high flying offense, but they they can't put they can't put it together. They they just simply can't put it together right now. Last year, they lost their way out of a playoff spot. They were looking pretty good up until the point they weren't. <laughs> you know, it's such a scapegoat thing to say. But I honestly thought Corpus Allo was going to get the start in net. I didn't think they were going to start swimming on. Can Saturday. I give you a hot take? Yeah. Play Corpus Allo until he gives you a reason not to. You got to justify I, giving him a. I know. Dude. I know that. And it's not an ideal situation. You You can't sit him. You can't sit him for that long. But. Look at the two. Look at how the two have been playing. I th- I think the way Corpus Allo has been playing, I think he's earned it a little bit more. Yeah, I, I think we talked about it too. Like Felger in like in the last pod, Felger and Maz brought it up about the 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 goals against between the two goalies. Like it's a large diff large enough difference. And just watching how they play in front of the two different goaltenders. It and Swayman has still had to come and make some pretty solid saves. So, you know, it it would it would be a very hard decision to make from a team standpoint after the holdout and after paying Swayman all that money. But look at the look at what's happened so far. Again, a lot of people are not going to agree with that, but why not? Fuck it, you know. I mean, look at the way that things have been going. Play him. Let him take I, the net. I actually think you'd find more people to agree with you to play Corpus Allo. I'm not saying don't. I think you should. I think you should be playing Corpus Allo a little bit more. I think he should get 20 games this year. He should. get yeah. gives Or 24 games. That gives Swayman enough, enough rest. But right now, I don't think it's rest with him. It's just the team does not want to play. He's made spectacular saves. He's looked alert, more more alert as the season went on. But the team just doesn't want to play in front of him. And I think in turn that he's seeing that. He might as well just figure like, oh well, then why should I make a save? It, that's what I mean. That's what how it all starts, and you can't sit him. I don't know. If I think that'll escalate the case the or if he's just off to a slow start, which is fine. Players go go come off a slow start, and he didn't he didn't have a training camp, which I think we're getting to the no. point where we can kind of take that off off his excuse fucking board. But he has an eight eight seven save percentage. Yeah, it's getting paid person. that getting paid that much money as a bona fide number one who should be a number one, and the way Corpus Allo has been playing. He is playing like the number one. Yeah. So again, Listen, hot take, and people might not agree. Let us know if you do, but I, yeah. I think you give Corpus all the net until he gives you a reason not to. Yeah. Or until I mean, Swayman let, can prove himself. I, I, again, I think it's part, I don't think it's all Swayman. I think it's actually 75% of the team that's playing in front of him. They they don't. They just don't. <laughs> it, it, They're they, also you, not playing stellar in front of Corpus Allo either. No, but they give up less odd man rushes against Corpus Allo. If you notice that, go back. I it's, it's kind of crazy. They they are letting up a lot of odd man stuff on Swayman. They are. I, mean, I have to go back and look at that, but it's pretty kind of it's nuts comparatively speaking. I mean, like I said, yeah, you're right. They're not playing that stellar in front of Corpus Allo, but at least Corpus Allo is seeing these shots a lot of the time. So I don't know. I don't know what to yeah. tell you. Again, good good week. People, people people might not agree with it, but uh, that's that's my hot take for this week. Um, good, good, not great. Uh, a lot of work to do. Probably getting used to a new head coach in the room, still working out the kinks they had before. But um, as we do every week, we have our big bad Bruin that Cam and I will pick. It's a player of the week um, segment. That- Thanks, Rick. And Cam, 
you can start us off. Who is your big bad Bruin this week? Uh, it's going to be Jonas Corposalo. Um, at home, he is two one and one on the season, a nine three five save percentage, and a one seven one goals against average. Um, I know that's kind of like looking at more of the season stats at home, but it's it's like we just talked about. He's he's earned so much credit, and you know he only played one game this week, but in that one game, he got a shutout. It was the second of the season. I don't even think Swayman has a shutout, so. It's it just seems like whenever he has played recently, the Bruins seem to get an extra hop in their step. He's played well despite an apparent dysfunctional team in front of him. And thus far, he's been proving his critics wrong. So I think it I think he definitely deserves a, a ton of credit, you know, this week, even playing one game. I, my runner ups were Marshawn and uh Lowry. I those are actually good picks, and uh, Lorai has been playing better, and I think that it showed this week. I think that that showed this week. Hopefully, this is the turn. This is the turnaround point for him, and he can start playing, um, you know, consistently better hockey. Uh, my candidate this week, as you could probably guess, is Joe Sacco. He is two and zero so far as a head coach. Uh, and, and it looks like the team is playing with a fire letter out of their ass. And I don't know if that's on the players or if that's on the coach. I'm going to assume it's on the coach because I've been riding the high this week. So <laughs> let's keep riding the high. I'm going Joe Sacco. But when I was picking my player, but when I was picking my big bad Bruin, <laughs> so I knew you were going to say that, <laughs> uh, Corpusala was up there. If I had to pick a player and not a coach for this week, it would be Corpusala. But riding the high, hopefully Sacco is riding the ship and we can keep uh, moving forward and keep growing and keep playing better hockey and going 79 and three. Lock it in, Matt. Lock it in. Yo, (laughs) real quick, though, like, did you see they're continuing calling people up from Providence and sending them down? I know this is not on the topic board for tonight, but it's bugging the crap out of me. If they're calling everybody up whose name is not Fabian Lysel, you are never gonna let this go. <laughs> I'm not. They brought up this guy. Like, what is it? The, the guy Veal, whatever the frick his it's name Veal was. Veal or Vile, sucked. yes. And right when whatever. I saw that, I was like, ah, oh, man, Cam's not gonna like that. It wasn't Lysel. No, because he. And sucked, then they sent dude. him back down. Reactivated Castellic. I believe. Who did? Who else did they just send back down for? Uh, Gorgi Merkulov, 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 and they yeah. brought up, and he didn't have that bad of like the first couple games. No, he I got, thought he played yeah. good, and they brought no up one had a good not, game in Columbus, so I you know, should excuse that. They brought up uh, McLaughlin. Yeah, so <laughs> anybody but <laughs> <Lysel>. <laughs> fucking baby Lysel, I, I can't kid. let it go. They I hate just, I, kid. I just can't let this go, dude. I just I can't. You're giving everybody else an opportunity. Granted, he has 16 penalty minutes. It, he only has like I think seven points in thirteen games, but my God, just give the kids something. Call Patra back up. I don't know what we're doing with this, but that like, this is, is crazy. I can't believe these guys are getting called up and Patra is not. They must really I, see something they want to work on with him because that made no sense to me. Th- there's rumors that they're showcasing some players. Maybe a trade is coming. I have no idea. And the fact that they said Patra, they want him to gain more top six minutes. So that could mean that they might be looking to try and move Coil. That's the only explanation that I think that I could have that would, and that would free up cap space. That's the only thing I got because he would be, Patra would be your, either your 2C or 1C. I don't know. We'll so see. I don't know. That's my, I don't know, not hot take, but lukewarm take. <laughs> like, I guess, like, you know, I, that it is. That would it, be wild. That would can be so- wild. And can someone get on the effing phone and just tell him, like, if you're going to give people like Riley Tufty, whoever the fuck Veal is, if you're going to give these jamokes a freaking try, could you at least give your fir- former first round pick a freaking look on the roster? On the roster, oh, excuse me. Veal was electric. I mean, I, I don't want him to stay up long term at all, but for his one or it was one game, right? He got into a fight and then he immediately got a two minute penalty, therefore, after. I wouldn't call him electric, I'd call him mid. I, we need scoring what talent. Know? What do you know? I need, I want scoring talent on this team, not some freaking Muppet. I do too, but you're not going to get it from anybody in Providence. You're not going to get this missing piece to the puzzle. 
No, just something. At least Blaisel has speed and he can take a shot every once in a while. So can't Merkulov. I, 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 I he will get is up. a bona fide like fourth liner fifth liner maybe like he's not bad like he's far more talented yeah, than me bottom that's six are all uh, hell our uh, brazo is a fucking fourth liner on any other team yes but he's on our second he, he is a fourth right liner on any other team he might be a third liner on another team but he's definitely not a first liner but that's what i'm saying dude like just give this fucking kid a chance i think they will try. eventually i think they will and then you can you can die just at me. give me something dude i don't know just give me a taste that's all i want let's take a look at the week look ahead and maybe <laughs> maybe we'll get another call up and another send down who effing knows at this point ah uh, all right i'm shaking uh we got the canucks to start off on tuesday we got four games this week dude four games busy week busy busy week. busy week so we got the canucks on tuesday um you know jake debrus comes back to town dan heighton comes back to town so and i i wouldn't be surprised if they cook us you like you know what i mean yeah i have this game as a loss i think that this yep. this mighty undefeated streak we have right now is going to end <laughs> because I think <laughs> this I this think amazing two and oh streak that we yeah, got going on right now streak gonna, that we're on end. i think that it's going to end i think the connects are going to wipe the floor with us <sighs> i i'm going to go for a loss expecting i don't think we're going to get completely obliterated with the floor actually, is the wrong the wrong actually question for you who gets the start because you know who because we have the who islanders on wednesday who i want or get, who i think who you think swimming okay so that means corpus Allo gets to start on wednesday because we have a back-to-back -back. oh you know what i should do because we're predicting these games is just agree with you because i've been Asses. I've been <laughs> so bad. No, or, you know, now I, I should, should say Vancouver's going to win. Because, yeah, I should just yeah. predict them to lose every you game, can... so they'll just do the opposite. <laughs> you could just bring me down, dude. You could just be bringing me down. It's like, oh, man. I, I have to go lost so in the hopes that they win. I have been so bad. I, yeah, I don't know, man. If, if Demko's in net, they can't finish against scrums. So Demko is out. They've got Lankin oh. and Seelovs. Uh, all year. He's out all year so far. Thank you to the mysterious voices in my head for clearing I'm, that I'm, up for I'm me. <laughs> Thank you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our producer, Rick, in the background. He's a wonderful help to us here. He's the one who plays all of our videos. That way you guys get to enjoy him. So huge credit to you, Rick. You don't need to respond to that. You can just stay in the background and, and be quiet. Oh, that is <laughs> tough. Looking at the numbers. We can get into it after. Uh, Wednesday, we are... In New York against the Islanders. I'm glad to see get? that they got there. I got first of all, I'm glad to see that they got that new stadium, dude. Like, really glad. Like, you know, fan base earns it. They're a good fan base over there. They really don't hate the Islanders. Uh, I got that as a W. I also have it as a W. I don't think that uh, really. I, they should win every. I mean, I have the Canucks as a loss, but they should win every game. Um, for a, a week or two, they can they they can beat every every team they're playing. They 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 can yeah. and have the possibility to go on a run here. Yeah, they could beat Vancouver, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's it's just not going to happen. No, I don't. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you know we talked about Corpus Allo is going to get that game. Um, Friday, uh, Black Friday, we got the Penguins. Um, they're they're terrible right now, so. Uh, you know, I, I know Sidney Crosby has had our number and says so of Genny Malkin, but, I, you know, they're getting older, dude, and the team just structurally is not is not that great. I, I get I got to give that a win. I got to give that a win for the Bruins, and I think Corpus Hollow might get that game. I was going back and forth on this because I don't think that they should, like I just said, they should win a bunch of these games, teams they should beat. I do think that they will take a loss to either the Islanders or the Penguins, for some reason or another, I'm going to put this Penguins game down as a loss, but I'm not super confident in that. Maybe it's a game where they're just kind of playing down to, to their opponent, but I'm going to go with a loss. Please tell me I skipped over you for the Islanders. I, I did, didn't I? No, 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 no. I said it. Oh, okay. All right. I was confused. I was just like, oh. Oof. I said it. I said it. I have them down for a win. They gotta, they gotta, they gotta beat the Penguins, dude. They gotta beat the Penguins. They gotta beat the Islanders. Those are two must wins for me. Um, you know, th this week out of the two out of the four that they should win. Uh, and then we got the Centennial game on Sunday against at, Montreal. Against Montreal, uh, which, by the way, 
Montreal received some good news that Patrick Laine is ahead of schedule in his recovery, and he will likely be in the lineup for that game. Swayman, you got to figure, is going to get that start. I have that as a W, mainly because fuck Montreal, and I know Rick might try and chime in here, but I'm not going to I'm let here. <laughs> um, I think because it's at home, it's going to be a centennial game. The Bruins are going to come out with a with a fire with some fire under their ass. Um, not to say that Montreal will not, but I I, I think I got to give that one to to Boston. Yeah, I have I have the same thing. I think that's I think that the entire team is going to get the entire team, the entire fan base. Everyone's going to get up for this game. I'm sure they have something really cool planned. Um, everything they've done leading up to this game has been awesome. I know you were at the game on Monday against Columbus. Did you see in person the jerseys they're selling the for the new uniforms they're wearing against Montreal? Yeah, I got to tell you, I'm not a huge fan. Whoa, you are nuts. They I, are awesome. I, I, I love, I would, I like the spoked B, but I just, I think it's where that bear is, like on the patch on the, on like your chest. I just, I would rather that as the full logo. Oh, yeah, but that's, that's that's just for this one game, though. Oh, no, I understand that. I mean, like, it, it, aesthetically, they're, they're nice, but I think I'd, I would leave me wanting a little something more. You know I think I mean? they are unbelievable. I think the military, unbelievable. the military appreciation jerseys are fucking. Yes, those are very cool. Gustingly amazing for yeah. pretty much every NHL team. Did you? I saw the Anaheim Ducks one. It's mean. It's freaking mean. I almost I bought not, one. I'll have to look that up afterwards. Oh, it's good. I mean, all the colors are the same as you could possibly imagine, but yeah, like yeah. their their logo just you know using the old Mighty Ducks logo just pops out um, at you. No, I, I saw them. I thought they were okay. Like you know, nothing. It didn't really wow me. Like, you know, I but... did hear when they first got announced, and I forget if I said this on a past episode, but I did see people on Twitter saying that you know there were rumors that maybe after this year there was going to be a rebrand and get used to seeing these uniforms. Oh, interesting. And when they got announced, I heard that you know they were released and get used to it. Huh. That'll be interesting to see. I, don't know. I can go, yeah, back, I don't go back and try to find it, but I like I like the alternates last year. The or um, yeah, for the centennial season. Or they've had or, a lot of cool ones. They've had a yeah. lot of cool ones. I liked the the brown and like you know yellow back there. Yeah. Like it kind of gave me a little and like with the. With the B with the nineteen twenty four in it, I, that's probably one of my favorite jerseys that they've had. Um, oh, did you guys want to hear my prediction? Like, awesome. Did you I'm going to put him in. I'm going to put him in timeout. <laughs> no, did you want to hear? It was a good prediction. I Bra- think Boston's going to beat us. Bring it. The eyes in the sky have something to say. <laughs> Boston's going to beat Montreal for that centennial game. I think. What was I that, think, God? What? I, yeah, big you game. I think, I think they're going to be up for it. The Canadians <laughs> yeah. suck. A hundred years ago, the Maroons sucked. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not going to agree on that, but what I'm going to say is the last few games where you guys had a ceremony or whatever, like something big there, you kicked our asses. So, yeah. I, I don't should. expect much. I'll go away now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise, preach. Uh, yeah, you know, all the good stuff. These are, hold on. These are really cool. For those of you who are listening... He is about to share his screen. And yeah, I just pulled up the, the Mighty yeah. Ducks. I, the Mighty I'm, Ducks I'm, I'm saying, dude, they look... Getting off topic, but these are awesome. They, if, if you guys are listening, you need to go on, watch this. We're at about the 53-40 mark. Uh, yeah, you you got to... You got to take a look at this shit, dude. Very, very it, cool. Because it's, it's wild. I wish I bought one, but what are you going to do? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that'll do it, right, Vogel? I think that will do it. As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in for Hibernation episode 21. Make sure you go check out hibernation.com for all of our blogs, our pregames, our game recaps, and much, much more. Uh, Make sure you check us out on Twitter, Blue Sky, through our website, and really any social media, TikTok, Instagram, whatever it is. Um, Give us a follow. We have a lot of content for you guys. Uh, or make sure to send us a voice memo or a DM, uh, any comments or questions you guys have to be featured on another episode. Uh, those on YouTube, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, we love you, and go Bruins. <laughs>